Hey YouTube, T1 Glistener Elf here. I've been playing Isle of Swaps since before it officially released. I've gotten all the achievements in the game. This isn't exactly my first roguelike or deck builder or roguelike deck builder. I have some tips that should help you get through the game, but first let me give you my, my bona fides really quickly. Uh, I have all of the cards, as you saw, I, in the game. I've maxed out the Master Binder. And when we do, do the challenges, I have for Dina, and for Dottie, and for Marshall, and for Finn, I've beaten all of them, Nuzlocke and Randomizer, and Nuzlocke Randomizer. So I, I do indeed know what I'm talking about. I have a few tips that I had to figure out on my own. Hopefully this will save you the trouble of having to figure that out. We're going to play through Dina, uh, and the reason for that will become clear in just a moment, but one reason is that, well, okay, here's, here's a couple. Dina is your starter. And in my opinion, she's actually the hardest of the trainers. You'll notice that each of these trainers has an ability. Uh, with Dottie and Marshall and Finn, they all have abilities that help you out in battle. Dina does not. Dina's works outside of battle. That means it's effectively nothing in the championship, and it makes Dina's start harder than the others, in my estimation. But it'll give me a chance to illustrate a few points here. So you pick your trainer, you pick Dina, let's say you're just starting out, you only have access to Dina, you have to make a deck to two in order to even get another to get Dottie. When you pick your deck, you have three choices here, because it's, you know, Pokemon. We have the the grass, fire, water triangle here, or Terra, Blaze, Aqua. I'm just going to pick Hanglin for a point that you'll see here in just a bit. You can pick whichever. I think that they're relatively balanced, but Dina still has a, a bit of a hard time no matter which one. So, first thing that you should do, this is your starter deck, um, but these aren't all of your starter cards. Let's say, perfect, you can and should change your starter deck. So this is your starter, these are your starter cards, but as you can see, we have other cards here. You can and absolutely should change your starter deck out. If you keep it down to this minimum of six cards, these will be the cards that you get every time. You can go above this, but you can't go below. See, if I take out, for example, Nature Aqua Attack, I need to have another card. What I would... Whoa. Okay, that was interesting. What I would recommend is... Usually, you want to put two of whatever your energy skill happens to be uh, into your deck. This will give you a pattern that looks like your Nature Energy doesn't use a card play, and you get three card plays. So you can go Nature Energy... Prickly Prickly Thorny Vine, and that can be your play. That'll give you, you know, let's see, so you'll end, because this costs two, you'll end with three. It's a little bit different for Hanglin, because Hanglin is going to be used th using Thorny Vine a lot. It makes the beginning of the game a little bit linear, but for the others, that pattern that you have will change quite a bit. If I had picked Walla Blaze, for example, then I could go Energy, and then the two that give Blaze, that put Burn Stacks on, and then a big attack followed by energy one of them and two attacks on the next turn. And I guess that gets us to our second tip already. You're going to want to plan out your energy. It'll depend from critter to critter, from starter deck to starter deck. So for this one, again, pretty simple. Nature energy, prickly, prickly, thorny vine. Nature energy, prickly, prickly, thorny vine. Where it says half thorns, that means that you're going to get four thorns just from the pricklies. You'll get Hanglin has its one thorn per energy used, I believe. Yep, so it'll be six already. Well, seven because nature energy. And then Thorny Vine, so you'll hit them for seven plus two, nine, and then it'll have. And that's the pattern that you'll have. It'll be different for the different ones. They'll, if you're just starting out, Hanglin, because this is a pretty simple pattern you'll do every turn for a while, that's a pretty good way to start out. And it's not necessarily a bad idea starting out to keep one of these in, because while it does cost a card play, it doesn't cost any energy. Sometimes that might be helpful. So we'll save this. Uh, it looks like we accidentally went into our first battle here. Um, this is actually not what I would have recommended, so we're going to uh, save and quit out. I was actually hoping to show you something else here. All right. So we'll go into our challenge run, uh, delete the challenge in progress, 
go back in with Dina. Thankfully, the, the beginning is just the same. While it is a roguelike, uh, your starter deck is going to be the same every time. All right, Blaze Keep. So, oh, this time we actually do have fire as a weakness. That's that's unfortunate. You don't have to quit out necessarily, but uh, that is pretty unfortunate. All right, so we'll do the same shtick as before. We will put in quickly. All right. You don't have any stickers to start out. We're going to take a trainer battle at the beginning here. And there's a couple reasons for that. So firstly, because we're Dina, our advantage is that our swaps are more valuable. All of our swaps get plus one value to them. Dina has to, because she doesn't have a, a battle effect, a battle ability, she has to just make her deck as good as possible, as quickly as possible. And that's a bit of what makes her harder. The Probably the most skill intensive trainer is the one you have to start out with. Okay. So we have, we have our plan that we set out before. Prickly, Prickly. See, we have seven, just like we said. We'll go through the fight like normal. After the fight ends, I'll show you something. All right. Same shtick as before. Obviously, we get a little bit stronger each time. That's neat. There we go. Up. Gaining two back each time. Good music, by the way. Love the music in this game. Okay, since we fought a trainer, we get to swap cards. You will always want to do this as Dina, and a lot of the time you'll want to do this as the other characters as well. When you look at the value here, yes, you get the swap bonus just for being Dina, but you also get an additional swap bonus here, and this is true for every character. It'll change from trainer to trainer. If you are any character who isn't Dina, you'll, if possible, try to use this swap bonus because it lets you sw swap up. So when I look in my deck, for example, let's say that I go into my battle deck. I have extra cards. These are cards that I, I won't be using. They're not strong enough. They're dual types, and there are a lot of them. You can use these to try to take advantage. Now, unfort it's unfortunate that we got the sticker as the very first one. For your very first floor, that's probably the worst one that you can get, but there's a way that we can get around that. But you'll want to keep these so that when it says uh, you get a plus one for a skill or a plus one for, say, a Volt card. Well, hey, this is a Volt card. It would also be a Spectral card, too. So keep that in mind. The number on the left is the number of them that you have in the deck. The number on the right, let's say, for example, we want to go with medicine first, and we do. We do want to do the medicine first because we can either keep it or we can trade it as a sticker to move into one of these others. Now, since we're Dina, we don't have to do that. We don't have to swap for the medicine and then use the medicine to swap for something better. But you do have that as an option. Uh, you'll notice that there's a little dot here by the illustrator on the card. Look at the bottom left of the art. That's the rarity of the card. If it's a common, it's worth one. If it's an uncommon, it's worth two. And if it is a rare, it's worth six. So you'll want to keep that in mind. Uh, again, if this were not Dina, what I would say is swap one for medicine, and then you can use the medicine you just picked up, if you don't want to keep that on yourself, to swap into, for example, um, well, what, what would we actually want here? Probably the Hanglin, I would think. It gives us an extra critter. That's going to be important because when you get to the end of the first act, it will be, there will be two. Um, if you fight one of the more difficult trainers, they'll have two as well. So you will want to make sure that you have, you don't have to have a second critter. But if you lose all of your critters, then you lose. And they get to take your critters, and then you have to try again with the critters that you have left. And if you don't have other critters, you're done. So it is not a bad idea to try to pick up more of these. So this is an uncommon. We're looking at three. That means that if I have a sticker, if I have a one by itself, if it's a common, plus if it's sticker, if it's a sticker, it's two. Plus with Dina, that makes it three. Uh, so if I take this medicine here, we could swap it for three value worth of cards. You can only put, by the way, up to five cards in at once. If I try to pick a sixth, it won't let me do that.
is... Hmm. I think I would like to keep the medicine, though, if, if possible. So, if we take an even number, we can swap these four cards for four of the common attacks. In fact, let's, let's do that, although probably not these specifically. Uh, let's do that, though. I'm... Uh, what would I actually take here? One dodge is pretty good. We're probably not going... Eh, let's say... To true damage? I think that this is actually true damage. Let's say that we take these four, for example. I like these four. Uh, these two are in the same color, and they're in the same color that our deck is. And then if we absolutely need to, we could try to switch into a spectral deck. It's not terribly likely to happen. Uh, one of the points I'll get to later is that the game doesn't strongly incentivize you to go into two colors. You're pretty strongly incentivized or disincentivized from two colors. Uh, you'll see why in just a bit. Uh, all right, so let's say that we'd like these seven right here. That would be we'd have to have an uncommon that we trade away and two commons. So if we start the swap, go into our deck, we have... Let's say you're only going to have uncommons, though, in the color that you start out. So we might actually have to pick one of those up in just a moment first. Because it's an odd number. It is unfortunate, but that's how it is. What we can instead do is go to see the cards again. We have one more card we can take. Let's just take the medicine. Let's just do that now, I guess. Since we don't have a value on... Uh, a particular type, Volt, Spectral, Blaze, Terra, etc. What I would recommend doing is taking a variety out of the ones that we have. So let's say one Volt Spectral, one Blaze Terra, and a couple of Nature Aquas. That will let us switch, and the reason that I'm doing it that way is that I would like to keep a good distribution of each of the types for when we get there later, but the reason I'm pulling two out of Nature Aqua is that we expect that we're going to pick up more Nature cards just naturally as part of building our deck as we go on. So let's swap for these. You don't have to do this right now, but I like to edit my stickers immediately so that I don't have a chance to forget just to be on the safe side. There's no downside to using this one, uh, so I say it's fine right now. Now let's see, we could, now that we have another critter, we could immediately add it to the deck. If we do that though, we're going to have to add in six more skills. So let's say that we go to, um, did I not pick up? There you are, oh yeah, it's this Hanglin. Let's say that I add Hanglin to the deck. So I would have two more pricklies that I could add, a nature aqua attack, and then the heal spot that we just picked up. And we could do that. And it might not even be a bad idea. The only trick to that is that you're going to change up, instead of having the same pattern every single time, you know, nature energy, prickly, prickly, thorny vine, instead of having that pattern every time, you start to introduce some variance. Your starting hand is the same size as the number of cards you need for one critter, which means you're guaranteed to find this hand. It's a good idea to keep it at one for as long as you can, if you can. You only have to go to two, either when you get to the end of the first act, because there will be two, and even then you don't have to, but it's, it's a good idea to make it less likely that you'll lose. Or if you come across one of the harder trainers, such as Rival, and you'll note which ones those are. Here, let's keep it at one for right now then. All right. And you could, if you so choose, take the sticker that you just picked up because that's the one that has the extra bonus and use it to pick up one of these. I think I actually rather like where we are right now. Let's see if we get a harder one here. We do not. You could take some of these as well. And if you're playing a character that isn't Dina and your swaps could potentially just go even in value, it's not a bad idea to take some of these regular critter fights because it guarantees you a couple cards. In this case, it guarantees you three value worth of cards. You have one common and one uncommon. Personally, I think that this is actually a really powerful one to go for. Thunderstorm is a great card, but it doesn't look like... While we can use Coruscant here, and it would allow us to diversify our weaknesses, which is especially good when it's not a Nuzlocke, it's not likely that we're going to be able to play a second color. Uh, let's say that we go uh, for this one. 
let's say that we go this way. We'll fight the gardener. There we go. Look pretty neat. And hopefully after this trainer, I'll have another sticker come up that I can show you. Because there's a certain type of sticker that you should always take, in my estimation. Alright, so two? So they'll actually take themselves out here in just a moment. There we go. Just like that. Perfect. Alright, so let's see what swaps we get here. We definitely want to try to swap. Alright, we didn't get it, so in the, in the event that we don't actually get them, there's a certain type of sticker that makes it where, in fact, let me finish the swaps here and I'll show you in the master binder. We can quit out and come back in just a moment. Uh, there's a certain type of sticker that gives you energy uh, every turn. And it can be, there's one for each type, including rainbow, so colorless effectively. Uh, even if it happens to be off color, even say, for example, I'm playing a nature deck, I'd like to have nature energy if possible, but even if I can't get it, it is so valuable to be able to have an extra one each turn. It isn't a huge deal right now for Hanglin specifically, because as you saw, we're, the plan that we have with just one Hanglin, we're, we're doing the same thing each time and we're netting energy. When you start to get into more expensive cards or when you have to add in more critters and you aren't guaranteed the same plays every turn, it will matter. Also, nature has good mass removal and not that we're seeing yet, unfortunately. So let's leave. All right, so when you have a situation like this where the only ones that are available are critters, generally you'll want to take one that's in color and you'll look and see what their secondary card happens to be. So right now we're not doing any poison. This one would open us up for a poison strategy. Hanglin doesn't have any poison cards to start out, including the poison energy though. So if it were me, what I would recommend is taking this chlorophyll over here. Now. Since we're locked into it, if I quit out, just to show you the Master Binder, show you the, some of the cards I was looking at, we're going to be locked back into that one when we come in. So Master Binder, let's edit our decks, let's take a look at the stickers, and they're all going to be worth two each. We're looking at, it's everything from Compost Bag to Crystal Ball to Comfy Bed. These are all a particular type, and obviously for us we'd like to have Compost Bag, any of these though are extremely valuable i would say any of these are must picks if you come across these stickers they are must picks you you just period you should take them they will help you that much even if they're off color uh, i would say that card holder is similarly a must pick in fact in a previous release uh rainbow sap which is a one uh sticker point sticker it would give you five colorless energy every turn. Now it just gives you them at the start of the battle. It's still also probably a must pick. Go for it again. Much better. There we go. Ran it a little bit closely there. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. So your critters heal defense plus one HP. Obviously, Hanglin has good defense for the start of the game anyway. All right. So here we go. Here's another thing that you can do, especially if you aren't Dina. I would recommend taking these early vending machines. We do have the shop available to us. Um, ooh, so, uh, this, ooh, this is a good, this is a good one. Okay, so if, if you take the vending machines, you can take one of the five or six coin packs and use that to give yourself more cards that you can use, not just in your deck now, but importantly, in future swaps. Dina can trade up very readily because that's her ability. Everyone else, you're going to want to pick up extra cards so that you have more trade fodder for these swaps. But right now, I think actually it makes some sense for Hanglin to go into the shop. So we'll check to see what you happen to have. Let's shop. And you can also just use this. If you're a little bit worried, you could take that space, take the card, and then don't go into the shop. And you basically get to skip the floor for free. So looking at what we have here, um, you know, every turn with Taunt lose one defense for three turns. Doesn't really help us out too much. Chlorophyll is here, that's not bad. Uh, we have a large sword to improve our power, but I'm not too crazy about any of these. Maybe, maybe the Chlorophyll. But importantly, what we can do, once you have a critter, you can get that critter's signature skill. Now, right now, we only have two thorny vines. Let's see. We could 
take Hangolin, a Thorny Vine 1, maybe a Healing Petal, and then take another Thorny Vine. And that way, when we make a deck that has two critters, we don't have to run as many bad cards, like Nature Aqua Attack. Now, we're still not going to have as many of the energy cards as I would like, but it gives us something. Alright, so I, I think that I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to go Thorny Vine. It won't let us run any more. Oh, oh, okay. Ooh, that's important. In a previous release, you could only, uh, well, obviously I can't buy any more now because I'm out of coins. You could just keep buying and buying and buying and buying over again. That actually would have been a good tip to give. Sometimes you'll get a critter that has as its signature skill a mass card. You saw Thunderbolt or Thunderstorm earlier. S just coming to a shop and stocking up on Thunderstorms would have been a quite a good thing that you could do. That isn't available to you anymore, but every time you come by a shop, you can just pick one up. And you'll come by a shop, you know, maybe three times on average when you go through these. All right, so leave this card. Let's see if we can get no, no super trainers. So we'll take a regular trainer. And in fact, let me use this to show off what it's like when you have two. Now, you could take the dual ones, but right now we're not getting any benefit out of the second type. But we are having to deal with the weakness. And it's a weakness that we already share with our current ones. So I'm actually going to go for Hangolin here, other Hangolin. This lets us diversify our weaknesses, and it has a resistance to the type that you're weak to. Now that we have a second, we can add in two more copies of Prickly, we can add two Healing Petals, and we can add, say, Grow Brambles, sure, because it has to deal with, inner, deal with thorns, Heal Spot, sure, that seems fine. Instead, you could also do uh, the Rainbow Energy that we picked up earlier, and that's probably more impactful for us, that's probably better. Or take out the Grow Brambles. I don't know, I could see that one going either way. Or we could take out the Nature Aqua attack. We just run both. Sometimes we'll use that for dodges, though. Alright, so uh, yet another Gardener. Alright, let's see what we can get this time around. Now, you do have one move by default. And for single target ones, you're going to only be able to hit the one right across from you. This is one reason why you need to prioritize mass removal as soon as you can. Not only will it make positioning not matter as much, you'll be able to hit all of them, but once you start getting into three critters, effectively they're doing three times the damage. You expect that the single target ones are going to be balanced by giving you more damage, expecting you'll only be able to hit one. Even with that in mind though, you'll get more damage out of the mass removal ones. We gotcha. I have a funny feeling that'll be enough. There we go. Yeah, do pay attention to their stats. <laughs> Alright. Do we have no stickers? Okay. Let's do you. There we go. Alright. Easy swap. And then add in the cards that we just had. Unlike the stickers that give you energy, I don't think that the same is true for the small energy cards. You could. You could add in Volt Energy, and it is effectively, I mean, it's not better for Rainbow Energy in the deck the way that it is now, but if in the future we were to add some Volt cards, that would actually be very slightly better. If there's anything else you want to go for, Bloom Heal is a common that is two colors and could be an extra energy for you later. That's probably a good one to take. This could be worth three. We'll swap, and we're looking at, let's say... Uh, oh, it's Healing Drink, though. Ooh. That's interesting, because again, this is two colors. It's worse than the one that we're adding in, probably, though. So, yeah, sure. Let's do it this way. Alright. Okay, here we go. You have a couple options here. This is a harder trainer. This one is going, since we're in Act 1, instead of having just one, they're going to have two. And it's Fire type. Now, because we have two Hangolins, one of which is resistant to fire and the other is weak, we can take it. If this were a Nuzlocke, I would probably recommend that you not go for it. Your options being, you could take the weaker trainer, which, yeah, there's fire here, but it's a weaker trainer. It's only one. You won't get as many rewards, you won't get as much money, and you won't get uh, as many swaps. But 
you know, we have three coins already. This will give us six. That's enough for a pack later on, and it's enough to keep buying stuff at the shop if we need to. So that if this were a Nuzlocke, I would say you go here or here. Sammy swaps. These are just extra swaps, and you are Dina, so this makes good sense too. But I'm actually going to try out the harder fight so that I can show you. So your first one, I think, is always rival. I could be wrong, but I think that it always is rival. Okay, it's two Walla Blaze, which is really bad. That's a, a high attack one. That's not where you want to be to start off. Absolutely not. Right. On, the, on the bright side, we do get to stack a whole bunch here. Now, for whatever that's worth, we do get to stack a bunch. Look at that, though. Half our life already. Jeez. Okay, so look to see who is attacking. They cannot move until the end of their turn, so we know that this one is going to be attacking here. So what I can do is I can swap the two of them. Now I know that it's going after this one. The downside is that now I can't actually attack this one. I can't attack... What I could have done is gone Prickly, Prickly, Thorny, thorny Vine, uh, or Prickly, Thorny Vine, Thorny Vine first. Could have done it that way. And that might even be the more sensible play, but that's not what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to focus on healing them. It's, let's see, defense plus one, right? You have the higher defense. It's really not much. Gives a little bit of burn. They're going to hit me for quite a bit, but thankfully we're resistant. All right, what are we looking at here? 11 damage and then two burn. Okay, and then we have 11 damage. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Alright, so we have a bit of a problem. If we don't heal you, you are just dead. So we have healing petals. Firstly, firstly. Alright. No matter what we're doing now. We could also try to kill it, but we aren't going to have enough to kill it on this turn, unfortunately. It's just how it is. Um. Hmm. Well... We do this first, right? Heals five. Now it'll be able to survive. It still can't survive an attack, actually, because this is 11 damage plus the five from its weakness. So we're actually still in trouble on that one. In which case, I probably shouldn't have healed. Probably should have just gone prickly, prickly, thorny vine. Unfortunately, it looks like you might just be in trouble, buddy. Now, you don't have any thorns at all. But you do have higher power, but that doesn't matter for Thorny Vine. It's not power plus two, it's thorns plus two. So, what I'm going to do, since this one's just going down, unfortunately, we can hit it for 13, and then it will die on the swing back. No, it won't. It'll be close, but it won't actually die on the swing back. There we go. Now, if this were a Nuzlocke, that'd be, uh, well, it'd be a little bit of a, a little unfortunate, you can imagine. Tiny little bit. All right. Let's see. Hmm. So we can go thorny vines. And now I say, it's weird. Healing petals here is a little, little awkward. Hmm. That's fine. That's fine. Heal them for five, and then move them up here. All right. All right. And I always want to keep this Hanglin, which is resistant, in front of you. Now, it didn't move, so that doesn't actually change that. But this one, now that there's only one, it can attack from any position into you, whereas you can only attack the one ahead until you get mass cards, which thankfully it does not. Now, that's a... holy crap, that's a lot of damage, though. I'm so glad you're resistant, my dude. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that would, that would not be ideal, you can imagine. All right, heal us up a bit. Try to keep this going as long as we can, if we can. Ooh, 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 okay, okay. All right. We could do the same thing as before. The pattern uh, prickly thorny vine healing petals. We could instead go prickly twice, try to build that up for an especially large attack. I don't dislike that. Another thing is that since you're attacking this one, I could put Prickly onto it, 
but I don't think that that's the play right now. Also, holy moly. Actually, you're just dead next turn. You are just dead next turn. Uh-oh. Well, hmm. That's not great. That's really not great. All right. There we go. Uh-oh. And then, yep. So if this were Nuzlocke, that would just be it right out. Even if we win this somehow, that one would just be gone, baby, gone. And by somehow, we do have a win here. You know, we stack it up too. We didn't even have to go that high. All right. So this absolute, but like I said, if this were a Nuzlocke, I wouldn't have taken this fight in the first place. All right. For the swaps, let's see what stickers they have. Okay, s still none of the ones I was wanting to show off, but critter cards get plus one. We can use the critters that we just picked up in a nuzlocke this one is the probably the worst one that you can get because after a certain number after three critters that you see you can't get any more and so those critters are especially valuable that's per actin. yeah i understand those critters are especially value valuable you can't really afford to trade them away but we're not in one so you could for example go take these first three collectively we're looking at nine which is uh, I mean, I, I don't have to trade critters away. You can use these critters, though, that we're picking up right here to buy into some of the other cards. For example, this Oratone can go into Umbrella, make them immune to poison and soak, because this is worth, well, actually, this is worth seven, and this is worth, well, no, because we're Dina, this one's worth eight, this one's worth six, and that lets us get two more, so we can have your critters heal one more. Um... Uh, we could pick up, say, I would like Thunderstorm if we were in those colors. Um, probably another Healing Petals is probably what I would go for here. That's what I'm thinking. You could do Blaze Energy. Normally you wouldn't because it's off color. It matters for Hanglin, but I think we have, enough, we have enough energy as it is. So we can swap these. And for right now, I'm not terribly keen on trading any of my critters away, but we could. We're not going to be using, for example, it doesn't look like we're using Boxor. Uh, let's say... Man, there's a bunch of these. Uh, yeah, go back to Solo, that's four, and then we can drop, say, uh, a Blinding Speed. Eh, let's keep that around because there are, there are two electric ones. Maybe, maybe we'll use them. Two Volt ones. Probably not, but maybe. And then a shout because we're trading away one of you. And then just pick a pick an uncommon, any uncommon. Let's see if I can find one that happens not to be a nature one because surely we must have picked up some that are off color as well. Surely somewhere in here. No. Okay. Well, in that case, we'll just drop the healing spot or heal spot. No. We could do take root instead. We're not playing a poison deck. It doesn't look like that's what we're going for. And then, swap cards, we take you two, and we swap them for you. There we go. So see how we trade up like that? We have eight co uh, coins, by the way. So that is enough that we can buy, even if we go to the vending machine and buy one of the seven cost packs, we can do that. That's your unmastered packs if you're not playing a Nuzlocke. That's your element specific packs. So we would take a nature pack. It costs seven. It's as expensive as it gets, but obviously it can give us some cards. I would like to see if we could find, I believe it's called Petal Dance. All right, see what swaps we have. Once again, we don't have any of the stickers I was hoping to show off. Terra cards are actually more valuable now. So uh, let's say that seems very good. Energetic healing does sap all of the it's your critters here in nature energy times two hp and it looks like it doesn't have a cost the cost is all of the nature energy that you currently have so do keep that in mind no this is an easy swap here we can just do you two there you go easy enough now it's always going to give you of course the trainer that you saw at the end Remember, they're going to have an extra uh, critter here. They even have three critters. 
Uh-oh. I see two with battle start effects and one that is a must kill. That's... That's really not good. Okay. Thankfully, though, its defense is low. Only has one attack coming. Uh, nine damage, lose three power for the... Oh, boy. I don't think we have much of a choice, though. Let's, let's take it on as quickly as we can. You could go after the charge pup instead here, but I'm worried about this one getting out of hand. And thankfully, you also will deal extra damage to it, so I'm going to use this to try to get stack it as quickly as possible, and then next turn, we can hit it as hard as we want and then end the turn by moving, if we can, if we need to. Alright, so we go prickly, prickly, thorny vines, good, ow, alright, okay. We want to keep you in front here. Psych up. Oh, it's not even attacking. Excellent. Two shock. Okay. All right. There we go. Ten damage. Trying to get there as quick. Believe it or not, there was a time when Hanglin did not actually lose stacks. And Thorny Vine cost one. You can imagine at the time that was uh, exceedingly powerful. Of course. Do this, and then healing petals. Just stay alive. Stay alive, buddy. I need you to stay alive, please. You get to be our tank. Alright. Go Thorny Vine again to knock you out. Now one scary thing you have to keep in mind is that right now the cards are being distributed evenly, and if you knock them out, they lose the card for that turn, whatever cards they had on it. As there get to be fewer those cards will go on to fewer and fewer of these until eventually all three cards are coming off the same one each time. That is just how it works. Alright, so we're going to do this and if I go now it'll go after the one on top. So let's say... hmm... let's do it this way I guess. Try to knock you out as quickly as possible. If we lose this one for some reason Obviously, that's that's the one I'm more worried about. So, here goes nothing. Oh, now, see, it has moved. It has no attacks, though. It has moved, but it doesn't have any attacks. So, we get to get by for a little bit, thankfully. Ah, oh no. Oh no. Could do Healing Petal again, but you're already at full. And I probably need to try to get more damage on you pretty quickly here. Alternatively, we could just stack that even higher. And that's what I'll do. Uh-oh. Blinding speed for a dodge when you already have a dodge. Ooh. This, for example. This is always fun. Alright. So, stack as much as we can here. Hit it with an especially large thorny vine. Gets it close, but not quite where we need it to be. And then get it out of there. Alright, the resistance where it only takes one each turn. Brilliant. I love it. If I go now, it'll attack the dude on top. We have five. That is enough. There we go. And you want to do that first, because you want the have to apply when you have fewer thorns. Alright, let's say... I don't know. Um, hmm. Actually, my temptation is... Well, they're playing d blinding speed next turn anyway. Uh, what if we do a couple healing petals and then switch them? All right. Yeah, since dodge stacks at one, that's fine. They're doing it again next turn. Yay. Alright. Hmm. Let's see. I say... I say... We just keep healing up. As long as it'll let me, right? Shocking strike. Yay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, I say as long as it'll let me. We'll see how much longer it lets me. Ooh. Okay. Now we might have to start going for it. Sorry, I have a touchpad. Let's see. First one to remove the dodge. Second one to actually deal damage. And thank goodness for the weakness, too. Hey, okay. No more thorns. Deal little damage to yourself. Have... Oh my goodness. 
I, I see a bit of a theme here. All right, what if, what if we go heal and then heal some more, as you do. They're about to get a dodge back anyway. When they have a dodge and are about to get a dodge, Ah, uh, but they aren't this time. They're about to apply some shock, though. That's all right. So we can go... They do have a dodge, so I'll play Thorny Vine first, and then play Thorny Vine. We just need one more attack, and they're not even getting a dodge coming up here. So that should be a matter of simply stacking it one time. And there you go. You always get eight at the end of the... Well, act end fight. Let's see. That matters because not just because you can use it in the subsequent acts, but there's an achievement for having 40 coins at the end. That means that if you go into the final fight of Act 3 with 32 or more, you'll be able to have it. All right. Let's see. So Soft Pillow, Black Widow, Steelheart, Steely Dan. Uh, I guess if we were if we were continuing the run past this point, I see two Nettle Patches tarot cards are what we're what we could trade there's not anything that i'm especially keen on and one thing that you can do here's another tip for you by the way although you probably won't do this most of the time it might matter in nuzlocks it matters in championships for very janky decks charge pop here is completely off color for me but you could still use it you just for example have it as your third critter and all you're doing with it is you're getting its battle start effect that's it. Uh, it might actually be what makes the difference for you later on. So for example, I, I need to keep the other two alive as long as possible. Charge Pup makes them lose one power. There's another that makes it where they all get a dodge at the start of the game. Fantastic at the start of the battle. That one's fantastic and is, in my opinion, the best battle start effect of any critter in the game. Uh, and then we will leave. All right. And there you go, showing you the ropes showing you some tips just going through act one i hope you enjoyed that if you'd like to see more hey subscribe if you like this sort of thing like the video i do really appreciate that all right but i will be playing some more isle of swaps take care everybody i will catch you all later bye bye